good afternoon everyone and welcome to Crafters TV. You're joining me, Debbie Fisher, on this amazing masterclass uh, with a difference because it's not your usual paper crafting masterclass. It is a sewing masterclass and it's all things animals which I can't wait to see. Uh, so it's going to be a great day. Now we've had a great morning, we're now going to have a great afternoon. Uh, this evening we've got a cartload going on and it's all things sewing because it is um, uh, all our softer side of life on a Saturday which is amazing. Uh, let us know what you're up to today. We was thinking today, uh, what is going on in the world? What's happening? Is it a national day of anything? Uh, we've got a few suggestions, which I wrote down somewhere. Um, it's Santa's, it's officially Santa's list day today. Ooh. So, yes, so if you haven't got your list in, make sure that you get your list in to Santa, because that's official. Uh, it's also, which is very appropriate, it's Asian Dolls' birthdays today. Um, yes, so, and it just so happens, we've got an Asian doll in the studio <laughs> um, and uh, and she's making dolls sort of uh, maybe dragons dragons and dolls you know um, so it's going to be great uh, we're fully interactive Susie's on our socials today so make sure that you get all your comments coming in um, and we're going to be starting off uh, with this masterclass with a fabulous guest she is just awesome at what she does because and I can say that because she's the only one in the studio that can do that um, but she is awesome it's our Becky and look what she's got there she's got a amazing uh, armful of goodness over I there. Have. Becky, these are so cute. I have. They are really cute. So today's all going to be about do toy making, doll making. We've got teddy bears. We've got dragons. We've got the whole shebang today. Um, so you get, if you've got any questions, and I know that somebody did contact customer services yesterday and asked how to put the hair on the doll, and I'm going to do a demo on that. Um, but if any of you have got any of these and you're not too sure about you know, bits and pieces or have got any questions, please do get your questions in, and I'll see if I can demo and show you what we mean. Oh, I love that. It's going to be very exciting, yes. And uh, and that's what Crafter TV is all about. I love the fact that someone's emailed in. Uh, Becky's now going to show you exactly how to put the hair on the doll which is so good uh, now remember we have got this little will in front of me or beside me uh, it is our, uh, 12 days of Craftmas it means that we spin it every day at 11 a.m. Uh, to see what that deal is of the day and today's as you can see is a free gift day uh, it means we're going to be popping one of these amazing little bunny key rings in your basket at checkout all you have to do to get this is to spend 10 pounds or 10 dollars or over 10 pounds or 10 dollars uh, and you will get that placed in your basket uh, you're getting all the elements to uh, create that really adorable little uh, keychain there uh, and what's fabulous about that it is free but you could gift that to someone great stocking filler that one as well so uh, love that and you're getting it for absolutely no pennies whatsoever um, right now let's have a look and see if there's anyone on with us uh, already uh, as I said Susie's on um, saying hi we've got Sarah Black Brown already in today my flaming galah um, she's saying it's a beautiful Becky and I'm back for more fun uh, it's now around 2 a.m. Sunday morning um, sending all my love from Melbourne Australia oh. uh, we've got Mary Ann in who's saying hello from a uh, cold Edmonton uh, and wanders in saying good morning all good morning Wanda wherever you are in the world drop us a line let us know what you're up to let us know what you're doing uh, because we'd love to uh, know more about that uh, but for now we're gonna get on with these templates now these are fabulous Becky's gonna go through them in more detail but I'll show you what you're getting in the full collection to start with uh, first of all you could be making this adorable elephant absolutely super cute uh, Jamie and um, Johnny saying they love the uh, the elephant here uh, we've also got that gorgeous lion I mean he's just absolutely so cute he actually looks like a lion that just needs to be hugged doesn't he he's got his arms absolutely. out he's waiting for that hug absolutely gorgeous uh, and then we've got that adorable dragon which I think is super cute it's amazing I think that's the one Becky's going to be using today so absolutely gorgeous design uh, then we have got the teddy bears um, so your first teddy bear this is your floral bunny teddy kit um, you're getting everything in there to create that adorable little bear you're then getting your gingham uh, teddy bear as well so uh, all those five different sets that's amazing value I mean really really amazing value uh, now if you just want to go for them um, as different sets so you might want to just go for your animals so that is your dragon your lion and your elephant if you want to go for all three of those today uh, you can get these for $24.97 or $33.85 you're saving over 15% on those ones uh, your platinum price is not 19.98 or 27.8 
uh, 8 cents. Uh, if you do want to go for your uh, teddy bears separately, uh, you can go for both of these as well today and you can get one of each. Uh, and those ones today are your two-piece uh, collection, which are $34.98 and $44.90. Again, platinum price is a great price, $27.98 or $35.92. Uh, so decide whether you want to separate them and uh, just get one or the other or whether you want to go for the whole collection and then you get the whole shaboodle. Um, love that one. Um, right, we're going to head straight over to Becky because I know that uh, she's got some, well, she's going to show us some samples, but also she's going to be doing a demo on this dragon, which is just beautiful. Um, I'm quite loving dragons at the moment. I've, I mean, I know I'm late to the party, yeah. but I've started watching Game of Thrones. Oh, and I've, I just never could get into it before. And someone said to me, keep just going, get through the first two seasons. Well, I got to season three and now I can't leave Hit. it alone. Yeah. Every episode, I, I just want to watch the next episode. It is so good. It is really I mean, good. it's brutal, very brutal, but it is amazing. So dragons yeah, um, feature heavily in there, yes. Although this one's a little bit kinder it's a and nicer cuddlier dragon. than yes, some of the other dragons. Dragon. Um, I got my mum into watching Game of Thrones and then she watched the first episode and she said, yes, it's not for me. And then I rewatched the first episode and I thought, hmm, but there was a lot going on in that first episode. A um, bit too much for my mum, I think. Right. Um, so she did, but I, I love Game of Thrones. These are absolutely gorgeous. The, I love the fact that we are giving you the templates. We're giving you the opportunity to make your own toys using your own fabric making these into like memory toys perhaps you want to use um children's school uniform maybe you want to do maybe you, you know you're getting married and you don't want every the bridesmaids to walk down the aisle cold in posies you want to hold a dragon made out of the same outfits or same fabric that you, their bridesmaids dresses are made out of oh that's um, a nice there, there's idea. all sorts of things you could do mm. with these and the way that they've been created is that they follow the same kind of template so therefore you can interchange them so if you wanted a dragon to have a bit of a mane you could easily do that um, equally, if you wanted to take off the dragon wings and pop them onto your elephant, you could do that, which is what Jamie wants me to do. But I just think I don't want to see any elephants <coughs> flying above me. You know, I've seen what my car looks like if I park underneath a cherry tree from the birds. i just a bit concerned about what uh, an elephant would do. <laughs> but the whole idea is they're interchangeable. Now, um, top doll making has always been a little bit tricky when it comes to the joints. Um, they're quite, they're, they can be quite tricky. We have made them very easy in that there literally is just a button that we stitched on. So you create your arm or your leg, or any kind of limb, and you stitch a button on. And then that allows this oh, joint that's to work. Brilliant. Um, rather than having to get like you get little joint, basically like almost like a, a hip joint that you create, and you have to sort of lock everything in. Um, it means that these are really achievable, even for people that perhaps haven't sewn very much, um, rather than being really professional um, or, or like a professional grade um, at sewing. Now the difference with um, sewing animals saying any kind of toys is that you have to change your stitch length because um, you've got that animal stuffing in there you don't want it coming up through um, the stitches which is one of the reasons we don't recommend you do them by hand because you've got to do really really tiny stitches you can do them by hand if you want to but I would definitely say the best way of doing this is by using um, one and a half millimeter stitch on your sewing machine to stitch everything around and of course you can create clothes for them if you want to if you've managed to get hold of um, our um, teddy bear um, clothing that we did uh, last year um, the clothes will work with a tiny bit of alteration um, obviously here look at his bottom um, it, it's, it's a normal shaped bottom as is this one but when you come to the dragon the dragon's got a much larger pointy bottom and you'd have to make some alterations for that um, but that, that, that's the only difference with them really um, right we're going to get started now um, I had said that I wouldn't be able to make the whole of the dragon um, today there's just there's just not time um, but I do Facebook lives on a Wednesday um, so what I will do over the next few weeks I will continue with Facebook lives and we will put the dragon together bit by bit and the bit I'm really going to concentrate on at the moment is going to be his um, head because the head's a bit different if you've watched me do shows before I often do an arm um, the arms are quite the, the arms are quite simple but the head is something a little bit different so I'm just going to open up my little um, pack here let's pop you over there you stay there um, this is what you get in the um, in the in the box. Um, you get this template. It's 
it's made of um, a kind of acetate. Um, you've got these little grooves in between um, around here to mimic the, or to show you the shapes of the, of the pattern. You're going to use um, a heat erasable pen to mark through all of these to get the actual shapes and put them onto your fabric. Now you also have on here these little arrows. These arrows indicate the way the fabric um, lies, so where the grain line is on your fabric. And I've talked about grain line before. Um, it's to do with how the fabric is produced. So if you have a piece of fabric, this is a great example because um, you've got an edge, a salvage edge on here. Um, so you can imagine this is when you when you buy a meter of fabric, for example, on both the left and the right hand side, you get these little edges. These are called your salvage edge. Now, when you have your um, pattern, your salvage edge should be at the side. And so this arrow should be pointing up and down. So if you can see here, if I want to cut one of these, I want to cut it with my fabric looking like this. I don't want to cut it like this or like this because it's to do with how the fabric stretches. Now, if I pull my fabric like this, you see there's not a great deal of stretch. That's with the grain line facing um, going up and down. But if I pull this way, there's quite a lot more stretch. And if I pull this way, there's loads of stretch. So that's why it's quite important for you to look at those little arrows and work with the grain line. So for example, like the arm here, you might be tempted to think, well, I want to put the arm upright like this. Well, you don't. You want to follow that arrow. So you'd want the arm like that this. That is to so be cut clever. Out. Yeah, so it's just small things, but they make a difference. So I've already pre-cut most of my fabric to make the dragon, and I'm going for orange and green on here. And I've just used um, some of our fabrics. I don't know if they're still available on the website, but they're just sort of um, like a mottled kind of um, print. They're almost what I call a blender fabric. So we... we um, had some fabrics a while ago um, in the or lots of bright colours, but with this kind of blendable, the idea being that they work really well with patterns. Um, so that's what we've got here. So I've already cut out my pieces. So I'm going to show you what I've got here. If I show you, I've got my ears I've already cut and I've already stitched. So I stitched, I put the right sides together and I stitched around them and I turned them out the right, right way. So I've got an inside of my ear being orange and the outside being green. So I've got my two ears, which I'm just going to pop to one side. And I've, bought, I've made myself two little horns, because obviously they need a little horn at the top of their head. We've also got here they are the arms. So we've got two forearms. We've got the body. We've got the body here, which um, or it's, a, it's the back and the tail is what we're calling it in there. So we've got two of those. I'm going to put those that way. And then I've got the legs, so I've got four legs as well. And then um, the legs also need little pads to go underneath. You can see on here, he's got his little, you see there, he's got his little coloured pads there. Um, so I've cut those out of, well, I've, I've marked them on my orange fabric. I need to cut those out in a minute. And then I've got the parts of the face or the head. Um, so this, this piece here, this is the, the snout. So you can see how the, his sort of nose is going to look. And I've just stitched around um, here, so that for, forms the first sort of section of the face. And I've got these two other pieces to form the back. Now, I haven't cut out the, um, the wings yet, because we're, we're definitely not going to get to the wings. But what I have done is I've cut out his tummy. And I thought, they need... I think a dragon has, like, a rough tummy with little rid ridges in it. I always think that's what they do. So all I've done here is I've drawn out the shape of his tummy, and then I've just taken a ruler... And I've worked from this straight line here, and I just put one line, one black straight line in the middle. And then I stitched um, back and forth um, to create those kind of ridges. And then towards the top, I just made the little gaps a little bit bigger. And that's going to form his tummy. So you can see here, on your dragon, that's going to be all kind of ridged, which oh, I think is that. more in keeping with a dragon. I was thinking about, you know, what a dragon would look like, what he would like, and I think that's what they would, they would want. Um, so I'm just going to cut this piece out. So I've stitched back and forth to finish at the edges um, of those stitching, and I've just used plain white cotton um, thread. You could use any kind of thread you wanted. It's going to go all the way around here. And what I've done on this, I've also included some batting um, on the back of the fabric. So when we talked about uh, making the bags earlier on, I talked about batting or wadding, and I've used that again here, 
um, to give it a bit, bit of substance because I wanted this to have a bit of texture to feel um, like the like no like it is when you rub a, the tummy of a dragon. You've rubbed a tra tummy of a dragon before, haven't you? In my dreams. In your dreams. <laughs> um, right, we're going to cut around here so you can see. I'm just doing them very smooth, rounding these curves like that. And then they're going to form his little pads on his feet. And when I come to do the pads on the feet, guess what I like to use? I like to use glue. Because you've got all of those <laughs> curves. And they're really diff it would be really tricky to do that if you were just using pins. In fact, I'll show you what it would be like if I was pinning one. And I'll do another one with the glue so you can see. All the glues and the sprays are on a cartload tonight so, uh, and the outlet sale, so make sure you uh, shop the day. Uh, you'll find them all on the website. In the, um, with the, the, the template you get, you'll also be getting the, a little booklet, as you can see here. And we've given you quite succinct um, details. This looks a bit of a, um, a jumble, first of all. But what we've actually done is, every time we've got a piece of the body of the dragon, or any, indeed any of the animals, like here we say legs, and we've highlighted in red what they look like because you'll find that the pieces overlap each other somewhat because we don't want to waste any of that plastic. We're only using one sheet. And we show you how many of each to cut out and we tell you whether they need to be flipped over. So sometimes you're, if for example, if I look at the feet here or the art legs, I need two facing left and two facing right because the idea is that when we sew them together, we're going to sew them together like that. So there's little things like that that you need to know. Um, and, but we give you step-by-step -step instructions as to how to put everything together. Love so that. you can see here, that's the bit that I did earlier on. So I stitched those two pieces together like that. And then that forms my face. So if I turn the face around like this to create that little snout, you can see it becoming coming to, coming to life, really. And now what I wanted to do is I want to put some little eyes in here. But with the um, dragon, what we've actually done is we've cut out a little bit of felt um, to create the edges for his eyes. So I'm going to do that as well. We've got the little circles um, just here on the um, plan. And we've also got um, little, well, little ovals for the nostrils. So I'm going to cut those out of my felt. I'm just going to find where I've put it. I'll put it somewhere very safe. There it is. So I've just got some of the felt that we have on the show. I'm going to use my heat erasable pen. <coughs> and I need true, true, I need two of the eyes. And that one there. That one. I think that's, I think that pen's running out. Obviously oh, used no, it too much. because you use it so much, Becky. I uh, know, I don't think they're in stock either, these pens. Yeah, out of stock. Let's have a look. Might be blue one round. Yeah, oh, it's a red one. Red one will probably work. Not quite so easy to see the red, but that'll be fine. And then the nostrils. Down here. So we're just going to cut these out. Now, if you find it's too difficult to cut these small circles out, um, there's two things you can do. Um, one, you could use some of the dies that you may already have to cut some circles. Um, these, are quite, these are quite small, so those nesting circles um, that would probably be too big. Um, but we have other circles that have been in like the applique animals. Um, so you could use some of those circles if that's what you wanted to do. Or if you're still finding it, you know, you want to cut them by hand and you're finding it too difficult, you can use a pair of tweezers. Let's grab the white ones. You can hold on to the shape with your tweezers and that will give you a little bit more opportunity um, to turn the felt. Oh, that's a good tip. Gives you a little bit of, it's like having an extra pair of hands, I suppose, yeah. in a way. Your big sausage fingers like me, you can't quite get them in the right place. That's a really good tip, actually. We could use that in paper crafting yeah. as well. Because sometimes you just can't quite manoeuvre your hands mm -hmm. properly. I'm just following that circle. It's not a circle, it's an oval. Around here. We do a great little kit now, which has got those scissors, which has got tweezers that you have oh, to yes. press them to release rather than press yep. to hold. 
There we go. So we've got those little pieces there. Um, we can stick on the ones, the ovals for the nostrils. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to put them over there. Um, and I want to make a little hole in this one here. Um, so I'm going to use... Where have I put that? I'm actually going to use my snippers. So these are what I use for unsnipping my, my missed stitches, which um, happen quite a lot. Or you can use a quick on pick, which is like this. And I want to make a little bit of a hole just in the middle. Um, this is quite tough um, felt. It's quite thick um, felt. So just be careful. So I'm just going to fold it over and I'm just going to do a little bit of a snip in the middle. There it is. Just take making that little hole because what we're going to do is we're scissors. going to pop a little um, eye in here, and I want a bit of space to go through that and make that one a little bit bigger. And these are really they are, these these are not something we sell, but these are really great if you they're very very sharp. I brought them online from the place where we always buy online stuff from. Um, equally, that's where I got these from. So these are um, my little beads, little, um, not beads, they're little eyes um, that I bought. I've got different sizes to them. They're safety eyes, um, so it means they're not going to come apart. Um, you could use buttons if you weren't, if you're, you know, you're, you're happy about sewing them on, you're not going to give this to a very small child. Um, or you could embroider um, the eyes on if that's what you preferred. So I just find two eyes that match. They look good to me. And then I want two little end caps as well. And we're going to find, find, find the face and work out where we're going to put the eyes. Now, um, looking at him, let's be honest, um, a dinosaur, a dinosaur or a dragon, they have eyes in the ahead. back of their head. <laughs> no, because you're, if you're a predator, you tend to have your eyes here at the front. So if you look at rabbits, they have eyes at the side of their yep. head because they're not predators. So they want to be somewhere towards the, the front here. So I'm going to pop a little bit of a hole um, between there and I've put a mark here as well who knew I knew so much about dragons eh I think it's more because they've just got such a big nose <laughs> <laughs> and I, I poked that little hole um, in between here I might just even make a little bit of a nick there for these two and then I'm going to pop my eyes oh I want to put them in through that first and put them through the felt first and then through that little hole hopefully you can just see that there and then when it pops through the back there you go and then you pop that little end on the top I'm going to push it down be quite firm with this like that and there's a the little eye in it's like Kermit now he does, <laughs> <laughs> he does a bit, doesn't it? And then through that felt and then through that little hole again. Where are you? And you just poke it through the back and just see it coming through. And then pop that end over the top. just needs a good push because you want it to be tight you don't want this to be loose you don't want it to come off so they um there's not a lot of scope in between these um these little things there you go and there we go then we've got his eyes now he needs if you look at him here he needs these little nostrils here and a little bit of embroidery to make that little mouth but i haven't got embroidery thread so it doesn't matter i'm just going to stick the nostrils uh, where i think they should go and i'm going to literally put some glue on them um, stick them like that so I might actually I might do that later I might do that after I put everything together when he's he's got his head stuffed um, right the next thing we need to do is we need to add the horns like that and his ears so what we want to do is we want I want the ears to pop up like that so you can see the the orange so I want to fold, put them like that over here so if I use a little bit of glue and stick them down. Good old I'm using glue. glue. Honestly, the glue, the glue is just such a godsend. It really is. 
Um, I, I never used it before I came to work here, but um, I'm just amazed. Now, I'm, I'm doing it by eye, but you could um, probably um, want to do it um, you know, exact. Um, the little horns, I'm just going to make sure they're in the right place. I think I'll start, I'm going to start with the horns first, and I can make sure the um, ears are in exactly the right place. A little bit of glue. And I've stuffed the horns. I'll just pop that there, give it a squeeze, and then that is going to um, just go along there too. So a little bit of glue. What was it? Was it um, there was a department store, didn't they? The way they did a dragon one year for their Christmas. Uh, that was Lewis, um, John Lewis. John Lewis. Yes, in fact, there was a lot of call for that to come back, wasn't there? Because this year there's a Triffid. Yeah. Which is... Well, I, I don't really get that. No, me neither. I didn't think it was particularly... I love Christmas as they used to be, no. Yeah, the John Lewis dragon was lovely. Mm. Yeah, I think um, sometimes you should just stick with what you what, what works. People like to feel um, an emotion, don't they, with a Christmas? Yeah, definitely. Um, because I think John Lewis had one 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 year when the little boy was waiting to count down to Christmas and you just assumed it's because he wanted a present, but actually it was because he wanted to give a present to his parents, yeah. which was lovely. Yeah, they do do some lovely work. They do do. <laughs> um, the, my favourite one is um, one of the adverts with the three old women that go sledging. Oh, and I like it that. It just reminds me. So it reminds me of my mum because she had two really close friends. So it reminds me of the three of them. And uh, it also reminds me of me and two of my best friends. Aww. So I think that's what we'll be doing when we're that's that nice. old. Yeah, I think that's a lovely advert. I'm going to leave this to dry for a minute before I stitch it together. But I'm going to take the other two pieces that form the back of the head uh, here. So I've got these two like that. Get them round the right way. Um, there we go. So those two pieces are going to go like that. And I want to sew down this long piece down here. And that's going to form the back of the dragon's head. Like that. And I suppose the nicest thing about these is you can use whatever materials you want to, can't you? Yeah, but, absolutely. And I love your idea. I know there's a lot of people that, that um, you know, when people have passed and their nans and granddads or, you know, they use their shirts, which is uh, quite nice to make these bears out of. They're like memory, memory yeah. bears, aren't they? You could have a memory dinosaur. Oh, dragon. I said dinosaur. I don't know where dinosaur come from. Or frog, as it's looking like at the moment. <laughs> so I just trim those threads away, and then that forms the back of my dragon. The back of my dragon's head. So if I hold that here, you can see how that looks. Sort of there, we like that. That's going to form the back oh, of his I head, see. so you can see how that's working. Right, so what we now need to do is I want to stitch um, the, this head to the back of the head. Does that make any sense? Yeah, so it, it makes a lot of sense, So yes. why, like, like we always say... It's you, like a skull cap. <laughs> right sides <laughs> together is what you want to do. So if I just follow round like that... So I'm going to set, start with that centre seam there. I'm going to pop a pin, few pins in. So I'm going to put pins in this bit here um, because um, I've got quite a lot to go around here. And I'm, I've got the, the, the horns have been um, stuffed, so they are automatically going to stick upwards. Um, so the glue might, might not have enough time to adhere. So I'm just going to go around here like that. So start that centre seam and work all your way round. And then... Do you do much hand sewing, Becky? Not really. Also, um, it's all done on a... a I do a little bit, um, but most of it's on the machine. It depends. I mean, I think hand sewing is really satisfying. And I, I, um, like I say, I went to this craft fair, um, or quilt fair, 
a um, couple of weeks ago and I, I bumped into a friend of mine who we've, we've known each other for years. So she is um, a soft crafter and she um, does a lot of quilting. She does um, a lot of stuff with a, an American company. Um, and she does a lot of her quilting is by hand and her husband was showing me what he's been doing. So he's retired and he started um, sewing and he um, entered a competition in Festival of Quilts, which is a big quilt show in the UK. And um, he got runner up. Um, which I was so impressed and he did it all by hand, stitched wow. this quilt by hand. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, so that sort of made me think, oh, maybe I should do a little bit more I mean, sewing. that's a real labour of love, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing isn't it so you can see here that all matches up so where we've got the head it's all matching up so now I'm just going to stitch around the edge um, here and again th well this time now because I've used the pins um, I've got to be quite careful to make sure I don't go over any pins I always put my top tip I put my magnetic pin pin holder just underneath or just below where my sewing machine is so I can literally flick the pins into it. Oh no, run out of thread. Uh, hold on well, a minute. You re-thread Becky because I want to show you all um, the threaders uh, felt uh, because it is really good quality our felt. It has got a real thickness about it so uh, which one are we using first? Oh, we're going to go for the festive. So this is the festive bundle. So you can see all those festival colours. Is it festive? Festive, not festival colours. <laughs> festive colours. Uh, so of all your Christmas, yes. Uh, it's all your greens and your reds, your browns. You've got blacks in there. Uh, amazing felt, this one. And uh, if you've got any of your um, uh, mixed media dyes, they're going to cut through this beautifully. In fact, you can cut through three layers at once. Uh, you're getting that whole bundle, which is 14 pieces in there, for 13.49 or 15.39 we've got hello color uh, which is your next one and that's got all i mean these colors are beautiful real vivid bright colors that you're getting in there again you're getting 16 pieces this time in that one uh, it's 8.99 or 11.49 you're saving over 40 percent we've then got rainbow colors which are all your beautiful bright colors of the rainbow which is absolutely stunning you can see if i do it like that you can see it a little bit better there uh, beautiful Beautiful colours. You can grab all of those ones. Uh, platinum price eleven fifty one or thirteen dollars uh, sixty four. Uh, Sixteen pieces as well in that one. You're getting all those felt bundles. So grab the colours that you like, uh, but they are exceptional value. Um, right, the actual um, templates themselves. If you want to be making what our Becky has been making with this uh, beautiful dragon, um, these are the templates that you need. So you've got your dragon one. You've also got your elephant. Absolutely gorgeous. Each one offers you that template set and full instructions uh, picture instructions as well uh, and then you've got your lion so that's your three animals uh, you've also got your two teddy bear ones as well so you're getting both of these uh, in that collection there's five pieces in total so you can get your uh, cream one there and your blue one uh, all of those including your animal templates uh, for platinum price 43.96 or 59 dollars uh, we're just going to have a quick break while uh, becky sets back up up and, uh, uh, and we'll be back in a second. Now take a look at our Club Inspire. Welcome to Club Inspire, the crafter's companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend. And the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. If you love Crafters TV, we've made it easy for you to watch us wherever you are. Whether you catch us on your tablet or take us with you on your mobile phone, it's easy to watch us anywhere. From here to here. Maybe don't watch us here. It would be easy to watch us here 
probably the easiest place to watch us is here. Crafters TV, with you wherever you are. Welcome to Crafters TV. With more than 35 hours of live shows each week, it's your home for all things craft. We shine the spotlight on new and innovative crafting products with live tutorials and demonstrations. Join our family of craft experts where fun happens every day. Are we in trouble or are we all right? <laughs> yeah. Should be, should be coming in. in. Should be coming in. <laughs> what does she do? Exactly what does she do? <laughs> this is awesome. This is awesome. Get creative and craft along. With our amazing deals, your next craft project is just a click away. Tune in live seven days a week, or you can watch us on Catch Up at crafterscompanion.com, Facebook, or our YouTube channels. You can chat to us, craft along, and meet new friends by joining our online crafting community. And I watch you every day and it's just what really gets you through when you're really at rock bottom there's a show for every type of crafter from first-time dabblers to full-time makers crafters tv create every day yeah creating every day thank you for joining us today on this saturday it is so in saturday we love to uh, um bring these shows to you once a month we just had a message from Rhonda, who said, uh, good morning. It seems like a long time since we had a soft craft show. Uh, yes, it has been. Uh, unfortunately, Becky was off the last time, so it's been a couple of months. So uh, it's uh, lovely that you're joining us here today. Uh, Rhonda's also saying hello to uh, everyone um, from Chicago. Rosalind is saying, will this glue go and cut the machine? So that's what no. we were saying about earlier. No, it doesn't. At all. No, totally yeah. different. So if you use something like wood glue or PVA glue, it does gum up the machine. This has been formulated to work um, with um, you know, with for textiles and to work with um, your your hand sewing, your hand needles or your sewing machine needles. Now, all I would say is my, my little caveat to that is if you use too much of the glue and you don't wash your hands like I've I've done in the past. So when I've been sewing a circle or sewing a curve with our um, Brain's not working, builder blocks, and I've been doing a curve. I've ended up with a lot of glue on my hands, too much glue. You've got to use it, you should use it sparingly. And then um, I've stitched it damp, um, and it's just got a little bit of glue inside the feed dogs. Um, it doesn't matter because you can, you can just hoik it up with a, a needle, it just came off in one piece. It was actually quite satisfying. Um, but that would be my only caveat. So don't use too much glue, and you will find that it does stitch your hands. It washes off, no problem, but it doesn't sort of. Um, ball up you know like um you know like if you use kalal or purpose you get a bit on your hand you just rub it and it just goes into a ball you just drop it on the floor or into the bin it doesn't do that it tends to sort of stay so you do need to wash it off um but no it doesn't gum up your machine it's specifically made to to work with your machine right i've re done my bobbin now um, so now i'm going to stitch around the edge um so i'm just going to do this quite slowly i'm going to try and do it quite slowly it that way i'm going to do it quite slowly um, and I'm just going to stitch a quarter of an inch seam allowance, roughly, um, and just gently, as I say, I like to use my um, needles, my pins, just underneath my machine, so I can li literally just flick out my pins as I'm working, and they will attach because it's a magnetic pin dish. Just going around slowly. I love all your little tips and tricks, Yeah. Becky. Well, when I was a child and I worked, my parents are at Shepparton, that used to be my job, that I'd get this massive, it felt like a brick. I don't think it was that big, but it was a massive magnet. And my job was to go around the floor and pick up all the pins uh. on the floor. <laughs> That's quite a cool job. That must be quite satisfying. Yeah, it is quite satisfying. <laughs> And then afterwards, we were allowed to go out for burgers after that. I do <laughs> Even more satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so we stitched all the way around the outside. And like I said on the earlier shows, we've got curves here. Um, so we want to... You can imagine if you turn this around the other way, that fabric that's formed on this curve has got nowhere to go. It doesn't create a nice smooth line. So you can use your pinking shears um, to go all the way around here. Or you could trim away the fabric or you can make these little cuts 
that just go from the outside almost to the edge of that stitching just a little bit don't want to go through the stitching so just be careful with this bit so I'm just going to go around here with those little stitches you can do it either way you could trim the edge you know close to the stitching line um, or we'll just do it like this and what will this do Becky which just means that when you turn it around the other way everything lies flat because you can imagine if you turn this around the right way now there's there's all this outer fabric that's got nowhere to go and it makes these little puckers um, okay. well not puckers but little folds that will be inside your um, the thing that you, you've made and by doing this this creates a little bit of ease so I'm going to turn the face around the right way now oh, got a dinosaur head <laughs> Dragon, dragon's head. There you go. <laughs> oh, he's proper looking like a dragon now with so his horns. I, I'm not gonna. I wouldn't stuff him now. But I'm gonna stuff him just for, just for display purposes, um, so you can see what he would look like. So, what, when you're when you're creating this, you won't stuff the dragon's head yet. You can attach it to the body first. But just to show you what he looks like, I'm just gonna use some of this um, stuffing. So this is just synthetic um, toy stuffing. Um, you just you need little bits. Um, you're just going to um, stuff him and it does sort of settle. So Becky, um, I don't know, so what's the difference when could you say about toy stuffing and then you have wadding, don't you? Yeah, what's so wadding, if I grab a bit, I think I've got some under here. Yeah. So this is a bit of wadding, which is flat and it's, um, it's like, it's like fluffy felt is what I would call it like being like so you can see it looks quite different mm -hmm. now you can get wadding or you can get batting that looks more like this but flat um, and they're, they're, they're great for different things they're not brilliant for when you're making a bag because um, it's too thick it's too what I would term lofty there's too much air within this um, this is the perfect stuff for when you're making a bag or making a quilt but you might find that sometimes you want to use wadding so if you were upholstering a chair for example that you weren't going to use very often you might use a bit of wadding in that and you, you use a mixture of different things but um, synthetic um, this is synthetic it's made of, it's made of a, a kind of acrylic or a nylon um, is the the one that you tend to get the most for animal um, animal I was calling animal I'm talking and is there toys. anything else you can stuff them with you could stuff it with your scraps of fabric oh, okay. if you wanted to but it would make it very hard right. it would make it quite dense yeah um not conducive for cuddling is what i would but say if you wanted it for like a doorstop yeah a doorstop absolutely so what, if you were going to make this into a doorstop i would still stuff it with this kind of thing but what i would do is when you get to his tummy i would make a little pouch i just sort of look at the, the pattern i'd make a little pouch about that kind of size mm -hmm. Um, and I would I make it out of some, co some cotton um, and I would fill it with rice. Okay. So I'd stitch it together and fill it with rice um, or, you know, something similar, sand, um, and I would stitch it together and then I'd pop that in the middle of him right. as part of the stuffing, but I would put stuffing around the edge yep. um, as well. So you can see oh, he looks how he's beginning to look. That's fabulous. So we would put a little bit of glue. I'm going to st stick his nostrils like that just here. Where's the other one? Have I managed to lose that one? Oh, I'm so disorganised. Where's it gone? I don't know where he's gone. I'll have to find him in a minute. But you, know, you can see how his little face is looking. He needs a bit more stuffing on his nose, but you would put the two nostrils there. But you see it's all coming together. Mm. And, you know, you're calling it a dinosaur, but actually you could easily change this to be a dinosaur. Yeah. Uh, would be something very simple to do um, but that is the start of our dragon now the next thing I'm going to do on the dragon is I'm just going to show you the foot and um, well, how actually, to do the foot. Betty, that because you've got the horns you could literally make more horns to put down yeah. the back couldn't yeah, you yeah. and then it would be like a dinosaur yeah, you, they, they're, they're the very wings. adaptable um, and I think that's why um, you know, Leanne's teams put them together and um, to make them into something that you can really adapt to what you want um, so I, I'm going to show you a leg um, 
Um, I'm going to show you a leg. <laughs> um, first of all, now. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on making this in my Facebook Live. So they're on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Amazing. Um, so I will be doing those. Um, and where next can week. we find your Facebook? They lives? are on my uh, under the Sewing with Crafters Companion Facebook page. If you go on there, um, I will. I'll, I'll be there. I'll be there. Mm -hmm. um, as I say, five o'clock. I did. I did frighten everybody by doing one at 10 a.m. the other week, and um, I had one person that joined me. Um, Sandra joined me, um, but it was a bit early for everyone else. I think it's like one o'clock in the morning for lots of people in the US. Well, the nice thing is, is that you can then go and watch them back, can't yeah, you? So exactly. you don't have to be on the lives. Although it's nice for Becky if you're live because she is interactive, but um, it's also one that you can watch back. The um, the children laugh actually because they're like. Oh, um, so I'm doing my Facebook lives, and they're like, you just, they could just hear me chattering. Um, and they're like, you know, is anyone talking back to you? I say, no, not really. It's just me, just me <laughs> chattering for a whole hour. Right, so I'm stitching all the way around the edge of this leg, but not on the pad, not on the bottom of the foot. Oh, what's happened there? That's not oh, good. Rhonda's just, you have just answered your question, Rhonda. You've put, Becky, will you be doing a Facebook Live on Wednesdays oh, again soon? I will. She will. Yeah, I'll be back doing this one. We'll do the, we'll do the dragon together on the Facebook Live. Okay, right, there we go. So what I've done here, I've stitched all the way round to the outside. Um, all around here and once again I need to do these little snips particularly round this because this is a really tight curve mm -hmm. you've got here these ones over here don't matter too much but that is a really tight curve and then round here as well to allow that little bit of ease That must oh. be quite satisfying as well. It is quite satisfying. <laughs> Actually, what I did need to do is leave a gap there. That was silly of me. I um, wasn't thinking about that. Let's do... Um, I'm just going to cut away. So these are when these kind of snips become really important, really useful. I'm just going to cut a few of those little strips there. There, there we go. Have you here. stitched too much then, Becky? Oh, yeah, I, mean, I meant to leave a gap. I wasn't concentrating. That was very remiss of me. I need, a little, I need a little gap, and I was thinking, oh, no, I don't need a gap, because I'm just going to do the foot. But they're thinking, well, how on earth am I going to change it around? You silly, silly lady. <laughs> I'm sure everyone was watching, going, no, Becky, we're doing it wrong. Well, I wasn't, because I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, you, you thought that in the gallery, didn't you? But you didn't say anything. No. There was um, a time when I did a bag inside out. I think there's been many times when I did a bag inside out. And my mum said, I was shouting at you. I was saying you're doing it wrong, Becky. And um, I was like, well, that was no help, was it? You know, you're not here. And I think people were messaging in, but it, the time it took for it to trickle through, I'd made that mistake. Actually, let's just go for the other one for a moment. Well, rather than unpicking that, let's just use this one. Right, I'm going to mark it now. I'm going to say, I don't want to stitch between there and there, OK? I can't forget it this time. I think you were purposely doing it so people would know that yeah. if they did the yeah. same thing, but not to do it that Look, way. Let, let's be honest, by the time I've unpicked that, I might just as well cut another one out of the fabric. And that's <laughs> the beauty of the fact that you've got that template. Um, so we're going to go, we're going to stitch back and forth here, the beginning and the end. Um, it's really important to stitch the beginning and the end of this one in particular, because we're going to be turning everything through. OK, and then do that bit there. Right, there we go. I'm just going to cut that bit there. And again, around these curves. And quite a few down here in that really tight little curve. What you might want to do here in this tight curve, you might just want to trim away that excess like that. There we go. Easy. Right. Now, what we've got is a, a leg, but no foot. 
or no foot pad and this is where we want to use the foot pad here uh, so I've already cut these out of contrasting fabric now I find the best way of doing this is I open it up like that and then I'll get my, I'm gonna get my foot and I'll fold it in half and then I want to mark those halfway points there okay and there and then halfway points there and there and then into quarters again here and here I'm going to do the same on this bit here so I'm going to fold that over and I know that's where my quarter mark is there and so that just gives me four points to judge where I put the foot in we've got this here so I'm going to pop that line up against that seam and I do it by pin, I could pin it. And then I could do this one here, same way. And I can pin it. And then these ones, the side, and I can pin those. But you can see now this small piece of fabric is getting quite unwielding with all of these pins in it mm -hmm. like that and then I want to really put pins in here here and here which I find really difficult because then you've got too many pins here yep. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the glue so I'm going to do it in exactly the same way so I'm going to put the glue on that seam here first two four I do like this glue Jamie it's definitely one of your favourite things. It is, it? because it makes everything easy. And I like things that are easy. And I'll put a little bit of glue here. It's like having another set of hands. It's like yeah. an alternate to your pins. And I think you know, pins absolutely have their place. But for something as fiddly as this, it's um, easier, I believe, to use a little bit of glue. So once again, I'm going to do find out where that mark is. That's just there. I'm just doing those four points. Show, sorry, Becky, I was just thinking how good this is to show because I wouldn't have had a clue um, if I was sort of a beginner crafter that wanted to, to sew this. These are really good te techniques, aren't they? Yeah. And then once you've, you've learned this, it's not, you know, it's not um, too difficult to do. It's just, it's just a bit fiddly is what I would say it is. But you can see there, now I've got all those four spots and then I, I can just put a little bit of glue in here and I can match up those curves because you're, jo you're joining curves with curves which are always a little bit of a challenge. So just a little bit of glue and I'm pinching those two seams together. I'm going to do it here as well. And, and it takes quite quickly, doesn't it? It grabs it does, quite yeah, quick. It does, it do grabs really quickly. Like that. And then we do those other bits here. And then when you come to stitch it, all you're stitching is the fabric. You're not fiddling around with all of those um, pins, trying to get them out, you know, making sure they're in the right place. Um, you, can, you can actually see what you're sewing, which I think is really key, um, rather than doing it you know, almost sort of a bit of guesswork. A little bit down here. OK, so you can see now I've got that already, and yeah. all I've got to do is stitch right around the edge which makes it a little bit easier. That's amazing. So I'll do that now and then you can see um, what it looks like when you've, got a, when you've got a leg. It does sound a bit weird, doesn't it? It sounds <laughs> like I am, you know, um, Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein. Just, again, you're using it, that small stitch, it's only one and a half millimetres of your stitch length just to prevent any gaps so none of that stuffing can come out yeah so clever Just like that, you have a pad. And then we're going to turn out through here. So 
there we go. And then so you've cool. got your little leg with his little um, foot down there. And again, if I stuff that so you can actually see what you're um, putting together. So this one I would stuff and then I've got to, I have would fill up that gap. But again, just small pieces of the stuffing. Just pop him in there. You can use a, a co um, cocktail stick, a chopstick, <laughs> or a, pe a pen to sort of stick everything through um, and make sure you sort of padded him out nicely. Now, you want, your, you want your toys to be cuddly. You don't want them so overstuffed that they're, they're hard, yeah. but you also don't want them um, understuffed and then they're a bit floppy. You want to make sure you've got a nice sort of firm, yes. firm thing to cuddle, really. Yeah. A little bit more. He needs a he needs slightly thicker thighs, <laughs> which is something no one has ever said to me. <laughs> I was watching um, what was it? Um, Love Actually. You right. know when they're quite. Have you watched that? Only once. Oh, when he's quite. They're quite disparaging about Marty McCutcheon, and they're saying how she's a she's the chubby girl. <laughs> yes. And I don't don't be able to, and with, with the enormous thighs. And I'm thinking, is she really? I don't think she is at all. <laughs> There you go. They got, you've got a partially stuffed leg there. Um, obviously, that. you need to fill that little gap up. But again, when you're stuffing it, you do need to make sure that it's not so overstuffed because you've got to stitch through a button here to create that limb. Um, but you can see how that looks. And much easier doing that foot with a bit of glue um, holding it all together rather than um, stitch, uh, st uh, putting needles, uh, pins in it and then stitching it together. Oh, absolutely. Love that. How amazing is that? Now, if you want to go for that, we've got a full collection here uh, with the teddy bears. Now, you're getting two of the teddy bears, which is incredible. It's five pieces you're getting in here. So the full kits of these ones. Um, do, what's in these ones, Becky? Do you get the materials in these you ones get every, as well? You get a panel like you did, like we did with the Christmas panels. Right. You get a panel that's already been pre-printed with all of the shapes. And basically, the patterns are very similar to the animals that we've got here. So like the arms and the legs legs will look very similar. Right. You'll get um, the animal stuffing, so the stuffing that I've just been using. Yeah. Um, you'll get the beads for their joints. You get embroidery thread to embroider their faces. You get safety nose and safety eyes as well, oh, and a wow. bit of ribbon for their neck. Oh, amazing. So you get everything in those kits. So they're the two teddy bears. Then also in that collection, uh, you're getting the templates. These are templates and then the instructional booklet to uh, show you how to make them. Uh, so you've got your amazing little dragon there. You've then got that gorgeous elephant, which I absolutely love. And then you've also got your lion I mean every one of those is just truly beautiful uh, you're getting them for platinum price of 43 pounds 96 or 59 dollars so absolutely love those ones um, with uh, in fact um, Tammy is saying Becky yeah. um, would you consider doing a YouTube channel for those who don't have Facebook Do, does your um, Facebook live go out onto YouTube I don't know Perhaps we need to find that out. I don't out. know. Perhaps our limit. We'll have a look into that, Tammy, because yeah. uh, normally whatever we do as Facebook Lives will go out onto YouTube, but we'll have to check on that. I'm not really sure. Um, but maybe, perhaps we need to, to look at that. Um, Michelle is saying, uh, morning all. <coughs> Excuse me. And Mary Pat is in this morning saying hello from a sunny Montana. It's the first one, Mary Pat, that said it's sunny. Um, everyone else said it's a rainy, dreary, windy oh. day today. Um, was you, what was that, Becky? I said, oh. Oh. <laughs> it's quite I nice. Thought you idea. hurt yourself. <laughs> no, the, no, the idea of it being sunny. I know. Uh, it feels like a distant memory, doesn't it? It does feel like a long memory <laughs> away. Um, just to uh, make sure that you know that he's our uh, board today. We spun this morning. We're now on your free gift um, today, which means you get something for nothing. Well, you have to spend £10 or $10 uh, over that, and uh, you will get this popped into your basket. So that will come to you with any purchase today over that £10 uh, limit. Um, it's a key ring, so uh, you can give it as a gift. It's great stocking filler. In fact, every I think I think in the show today you could um, literally part them down and give them as different gifts or just treat yourself which would be amazing so absolutely love those ones uh, remember again we are fully active uh, active of course we're active uh, <laughs> but uh, make sure you get any comments in that you want to our Susie will send them across uh, to the studio so make sure you ask away 
Now we're just uh, going into um, our new fabrics. I'm going to show you some new fabrics here on Crafters TV. Uh, if you've just joined us, then welcome. Uh, we've got some amazing new fabrics. There is, in fact, 12 designs in total, uh, which I absolutely love. Uh, each one, and then you just choose whichever ones you want. We've got our Ditsy Floral Cream, um, a beautiful design. You're getting half a meter in each one, so $7.49 or $10.99 for each half a meter. Uh, we've then got our uh, blue one, so our blue Ditsy Floral, which is beautiful, another lovely design. We've also got the Ditsy Floral in a darker blue. I think this is my favourite. I love this one. I think those peach colours is absolutely gorgeous. I can see navy. you wearing a dress like that. Yeah, it's really, really lovely. In fact, I think I have something similar apart from um, mine's a black dress with the yeah. sort of, uh, peachy colour flowers on them, but I love that one. Uh, we've then got our uh, dotty one. So our flower dot in uh, blue. We've also got the flower dot in red. So you just choose whichever design you want to go for. Platinum price is $5.99 or $8.79. We've got our small flowers in blue. Absolutely beautiful design, that one. If you like your pastels, uh, these two are beautiful. You've got your pink one as well there. So your light blue and then you've got that pale pink. I absolutely adore that. Beautiful fabrics. Uh, they're 100% cotton as well. You've got your hearts in red. Love the design on that one. So you're getting all your red designs. And then you've got your hearts in blue. So another gorgeous one. Love that one because you've got the red hearts in the blue gingham there. Um, and then you've got your cream here or your natural hearts, which has got, again, your red hearts in that beautiful cream colour. And then the, la the last ones that we have are our floral chain blue. Another beautiful design. Love that one as well. And then you've got your floral chain in in your green as well so 12 different designs you can choose whichever ones that you've got in there um, and 5.99 or $8.79 nearly spun the wheel again for you then you can't have another deal today just one a day one is it yeah one a day 12 days of Christmas no. that sorry you've spun it now we've got to have did another it, go did it spin yes no we've got to stay on the free gift she's got to stay on the free gift um, Becky's trying to get me into trouble that's what she's <laughs> trying to do um, right so that's your low Lewis and Irene uh, fabrics, which are absolutely beautiful. Um, now, I believe, are we going on to the rag dolls? Uh, I've got them. Oh, you've got them. I've got them. Becky's pinch the rag dolls. I've got them because I did. I can't find my um, set, so I'm going to ah, have to use them. Okay, so, so Becky's going to show you them. But these each individual one, you're getting uh, two templates with them for eight ninety nine or eleven dollars sixty five. So you're actually saving ten percent on those ones. Um, you've got two different codes, so make sure you go for the one. Look which on the pictures and see which ones you've got. Uh, Becky, show us them. Yes. Yeah, so the they all both of these sets come with one ragdoll template so the the template is exactly the same for the doll um whether it's a i'm going to say male or female doll girl or boy doll for the no just because i'm trying to be i don't know i trying to work out what you know what you want to do we're saying that the girl doll's got long hair and wears pretty dresses and the boy doll wears sort of t-shirts and shorts but you can mix and match however you want them. Um, so you get the actual template to make the doll, which is exactly the same. The only difference is how we've done the hair. Um, and then with one, you'll get this template, which has got the, um, the template outfit two. It was outfit one. That's got the girl outfit. So it's got dungas, it's got a blouse, it's got a dress. You can also convert the dress into a skirt. Um, you're going to be getting socks in there too and also little shoes, uh, which makes it really good. But if you wanted to go for the ragdoll template, ragdoll with template number two, um, this has the more boy clothes, I suppose, for want of a better term, a T-shirt, shorts, um, which you can convert into trousers and a pair of trainers but they all work really well together um, so it makes it um, really worthwhile to have both um, now what I'm going to show you is um, how to use the templates because they follow the same kind of format as those other templates that we've had um, on the show in that they are um, these kind of large plastic templates um, and they have overlapping um, patterns on them, overlapping shapes on them, and they'll come with a little booklet as well. So if I show you what you're going to get in the actual doll, um, you can see here, it's very simple, they're very easy to la lay out, and then, but they're much bigger than the animal template. So this is a leg, um, and again, once we've, we've done the same sort of thing that we've shown you, um, where that 
grain line is. And we've oh, written on yes. each one how many of everything to cut. So the legs, you cut four of, arms four, um, hair back is two, bodies two. So we've given you all of those bits and pieces there. And you just use one of your heat erasable pens. Um, we've once again given you the little booklet, which shows you step by step how to put everything together. And we've shown you the cutting preparation. Now, generally speaking, when you're going to be making the rag doll body itself, it's probably going to be a plain fabric. So you don't need to worry so much about flipping the um, template around the, the other way. Um, more or less, generally speaking, it's probably going to be a pattern, it's not going to be patterned fabric. And we show you how to put it together. Now, these are slightly different in, um, in respect of the other animals because the other animals have got um, joints, but we don't have joints. Now, I'm, I'm really sorry, and it's a little bit remiss of me, but I'm going to take some of the clothes off to show you. Ooh. He does look naked on the picture anyway. Yeah. He looks like he's going to the beach. Exactly. Topless. So we're just going to pull his top off. Gosh, you've got... You've really been going to the gym. You've got really muscly Zipper. biceps now. <laughs> right, so you can, you can see here. Have they got names? These they have got girls? one of them. One of them was called Brent. But I can't remember. Well, can't yeah, remember, remember which one it was. Brent I think before. it was this one actually. Um, so you can see here. This is how this one's put together. So you literally stitch the arms and the legs into the body. So you don't have that joint because ragdolls don't. They are floppy by design. Yeah. Um, so it's a little bit easier, actually, if you're going to start making dolls, ma making toys, to start with a ragdoll because you don't have to worry about getting all those joints ready. Um, you're just going to have to... Um, oh, honestly, he has been at the gym. He has been bulking up because I can barely get his <laughs> arm through that T-shirt. <laughs> and I'm going to pull your trousers up because you're... They're sliding down like a teenager. Yeah, sort your pants up. There you go. Um, so you can see how they look. They are supposed to be floppy. Now, with the head, I'm going to show you the head because somebody asked about how to do the hair, and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a moment. So we, you cut out a piece of fabric for their actual face, for the back and for the front, and then the 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 hair is cut out of... We've actually used felt for this because you don't have any fraying um, around the outside. So you cut a piece of felt um, to create this part. And then you do the same. You cut a piece of felt and you stitch it together. And you almost, it's almost creating like a cap that goes onto the back of the um, head. Now, with the girls, they've obviously got... Um, longer hair that's how we're distinguishing them and there are a number of ways we can do the hair um, the one I really wanted to show you I couldn't find I don't know what's happened to that but one of them has got plaits that have just been attached so this one for example we've taken some um, wool and we've just cut it into a piece a piece of wool and then we just stitched along here to create that hairline um, you could do that um, no problem that you could also take a little tufty bit and stitch it across here and then that would create a fringe but you've already got a bit of a fringe here anyway and then that's just been pulled to one side whereas this one here has been a little bit more complicated in that we have taken the hair and we've stitched it here and here and also down the side here but we've done we've done a little hairstyle so we've actually plaited the hair hold it that way you can probably see we plaited the hair and created almost like a what I would term a Pollyanna kind of hairstyle you know I'll Pollyanna that. remember that show mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, they created more of a hairstyle like that uh, or we can make bunches um, and then sort of stitch them by hand into the hair um, and then create sort of little plaits and that's sort of what I'm going to show you how to do in just a moment so I'm going to put these together put them there they're, they're, do they're doing that rock the boat show or song you know when Rosie and Jim. Down. Yeah. They're like what Rosie and Jim, aren't they? That one. Yeah, that one. Is it Rock the Boat? It's not Rock Your Boat. Hoops up so your head. head. That's it. That's that's the jobby. That's the one I meant meant. So what I've got here, I've got some white fabric and I'm just going to I'm going to do an arm to show you how to do an arm on here. Um, using these. So I want four arms all together, but I'm only going to do one arm. So what four pieces? cut all together but I only want um, to do one at the moment so I'm just going to fold my fabric in half and I'm going to use that and I want to make sure that my grain line is in the right place I'm going to pop my template down here and I've got these two little um, marks here these are to indicate where I start and stop sewing um, so I want to start down here when I'm stitching um, and then I'm going to give that gap open 
for um, when I'm stuffing and also when it's becomes when it's joining um, to the body. So using those heat erasable pens. Rhonda is saying fleece would work for the hair as well. Pardon? Fleece. Uh, yeah, you could do. Yeah, you could do. You could use fleece. Be no problem with that. All right, I'm going to be lazy, so I'm going to pin these two pieces of fabric together, and then I'm going to cut them out in one go rather than Sounds good. doing it twice. Is it lazy or efficient? I don't know. I'd probably say lazy. I do it with card. Huh? I do it with card. Do you? Mm. I just tape, I normally I just fold it in half and yeah. then I tape the two sides together so it doesn't get like wobble and then I just cut two out. It's efficiency. It's efficient, yeah. yeah. It's efficient. Well, I think the, the cutting out bit, I, I never really enjoy it. It's the actual putting together it. That's why I love the builder blocks because I don't have to cut anything out. <laughs> Just but I suppose once you've done these pieces, and you could batch make them, couldn't you? You yeah. could cut lots at a time, just make sure that you write on them what they are or put a little note to them. Absolutely. And the great thing about that is I can then just stitch it. I don't have to think about yeah. what, um, what I'm doing. So um, I, I'm going to stitch all the way around the outside, but I'm leaving that gap there. Um, I haven't made that little mark, those two little stitch marks, so I'm just going to pop that back over, use my heat erasable pen just to mark those two there and then that will remind me where to start and stop the stitching. Where's my pins? Yeah, Rhonda's saying efficient, not lazy. <laughs> She's also saying Chicago is sunny today. Sunny and warm in New Orleans today. Ooh. Going to be almost 80 Fahrenheit, 26 degrees today. But tonight we're going to have a storm. So tomorrow it's only meant to be 56, which is 13 centigrade. I've never been abroad for Christmas. Um, I, I, like, I like being at home. But I, can't, I can't get my head around being somewhere hot for Christmas. No. You yeah, know, I've never been anywhere hot for Christmas, but I have to say, last year we went uh, down to Nacton on the Norfolk coast, and um, and Christmas Eve we spent on the beach, and yeah. it was absolutely full sunshine. Oh. It was amazing, and I couldn't believe that we were on the beach on Christmas Eve uh, in the UK, and it was lovely. It yeah. was so lovely. <laughs> I've been, I think we were in Bali one year, but like at the beginning of December, and there were deco Christmas decorations around, and that just felt really odd. Yeah, it must do. Couldn't quite get to grips with that. And again, we've got curves on here, so we're going to cut down those little segments like that. We turn them around, around those curves. Or you can trim it, so if you wanted to, you could just trim close to the edge on those curves, like that. So two options you can do there. Um, we've got a few more curves over here and then like that. And once again, turn it around the right way and then stuff it. And then that'll make your little arm um, so easy enough to do. And you do all of the limbs in the same way. Um, so, one, you know, so all of the arms and the legs in the same way. Um, and then they're easy to stitch together because you're just going to stitch them onto the body. Um, so you will stuff these first. Um, then you will make the body and you will stu stitch these to the body before you stuff the body. Um, but you make the whole thing in, in one go. So if I turn this around the right way, so you can see. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I spent so much time turning things inside out, haven't I? There you go. But it's good because it shows everybody how you do it from start to finish. That's what I reckon. And I'm just looking for my stuffing. Where's my stuffing gone? Okay, again, little bits of stuffing, small pieces. You can roll them into a bit of a sausage if you find it easier um, to stuff it in like that. I think once you've got the first little bit in, um, it becomes quite easy. Um, but I always use something, something with like a blunt end. These pens are absolutely ideal. You don't want anything with a sharp end. Um, so if you do use a, co um, not a cocktail stick, a chopstick, I know, why am I doing that? 
you know, I think it's because I'm thinking about cocktail sausages because it's nearly Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I like the um, Nigella cocktail sausages with... Um... Is it the sticky ones? Yeah. Yeah, Sal cooks them. Oh. Yeah, they are very good. They yeah, are. he cooks a lot of Nigella stuff. Yeah, they are amazing. Yeah. So with sesame oil, soy sauce and honey. Yeah. Oh, they are to die for. Yeah, they really are very nice. good. My, my mum bought me a little serving dish for Christmas, um, but I, I chose it when we were out in the shops. Um, and it's, got, um, it's perfect for my, my um, sausages because it's got a little um, present, um, like a ceramic present in the middle, and that's where you put your cocktail sticks. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, that's very that's good. Cool. Right, so we're just going to do a little bit more. This, this last piece will be sufficient to pop in here. Um, there we go. And then you're just going to stitch this um, little bit up. But you don't need to do that until you're actually attaching it to the body. Actually, you probably need a little bit more. Um, so all you will do, you can see here, that's my end. I just fold that in, um, and then I would stitch that. You can, you can stitch it together like that, or you can just wait and stitch it and attach it to the actual body so it's easy enough to do. Now, where is the one that, where's my body? Where's my body's your body? over here. So you can see here, I've got him, and he <laughs> has... He's got his legs. <laughs> He's a bit naked. So I'm just going to just going to hide his modesty. So yeah, but you can see he's got his he's got his head and he's got his body and he's just he's now ready for stuffing complete and completing. Um, but what I wanted to do was show you um, hair. So I'm going I'm going to put some stuffing in his head. Um, so I've got a um, a hard well not hard but a rigid kind of surface um, to work with. Um, so we would be this is sort of like the final stage of your um, rag doll. So you've done all the bits and pieces, you've done all the limbs, you've attached the limbs to the body. Where is that big bag of stuffing? Have I used it all? Maybe I've used it all. Oh well. You can see you've got, you've got his head like that. Um, now I've got some white, because that's, that's all I could find at home. Um, I've got some white. Um, wool just ordinary acrylic wool i've not spent a, a lot of money on this um i've just go and i'm going to show you the different ways we're going to attach it so i've talked about with the fact that we could which is probably better showing it in white because you can actually truly see it so you could have your hair like that and we could just stitch with a sewing machine across like that but you would have to do that at the start oh thank you, there you thanks go. <laughs> um, yeah you could have thrown it at me i could have done <laughs> um, you, but if you were going to do that, you would want to um, stitch that before you put the body, your head onto your body, because obviously you've got nothing to stitch onto. I'm, I'm going to give him a bit more of a stuffing, because he just, he just seems a little bit, you know, lost, doesn't he, without all that stuffing. Um, so this is the stuffing that's come out of the, um, the teddy bear kit. Um, and it's still acrylic, but you can uh, so still um, synthetic. And you say it's slightly different to the one that I've got. There's no better one, really. Um, it's just whatever you happen to have, whatever you happen to get hold of. It's easy enough to get hold of online um, or in like craft stores. You'll be able to get it. And it's just called toy animal stuffing. So we'll pop a little bit more in there. Let's give you a bit in your tummy. There you go. Oh, you need a big fat tummy there. It's amazing how much stuffing you can fit in these. It does compress down as you're, you're putting it all together. There, that's better, that's better. So, like I said, you could take your, your thread or your ribbon, wool, and you could have put it like this and stitched along here. Um, and then that would have created a, a kind of a hairstyle. But you would want to continue it all the way down here, so you'd want more of that. Um, but the one, one that I thought I would show you is to, to make it into a, a bunch, you know, so you can have bunches um, down here. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to stitch it by hand. Um, and I've got my thread or my, my um, wool. And I want to place it around about here like that and I'm going to stitch that in now I will need to pin it and the glue, the glue is not going to work here which is very sad it's the only thing that I've done that I can't I can't glue so I'm just going to stitch this by hand so I've just got um, a thread needle and thread and I'm going to stitch along here and we want to go back and forth a number of times because we want to secure it all 
really tightly because this is the thing that the children are really going to play with, aren't they? They're yeah. going to be stroking the hair and pulling the hair, doing different hairstyles, that in kind it. of thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to... couple of stitches. Just like this. Yeah, I'm, I'm really concentrating now, I can't talk. It's like when we talk about colouring, that you have to really concentrate. When yeah, I do hand sewing, I've really got to concentrate. So if you wanted it like frizzy, like that other doll that you showed, yeah. do you just brush your wool? And that's been different that's a different type of wool. Oh, okay. Um, so that's more, if you look at this, this is a different type of wool. This is, um, it's, this is still synthetic. It's not, it's not, um, it's like an acrylic, but this is a different type of wool. Ah. You might even be able to get wool specifically designed for dolls that's hair. That's very cool. I yeah. just thought it was brushed out. No, it's actually got little loops in it. Um, it's been, you know, been produced like that. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not big on um, knitting, actually. I like, I'd like to knit, but I like to knit something really basic and really simple that I don't have to think about. Mm -hmm. um, it has to be something really, really simple, like a, a scarf. Um, but I like, I like knitting. I like the therapy of it. Yeah. Because it is, it is very therapeutic, isn't it? Uh, well, I've, ne I've never been able to knit, but we uh, have a little girl group and uh, we always meet up every uh, couple of months at least, oh, okay. or every month if we can. But uh, we were all uh, around my friend Tasha's uh, two weeks ago and um, my friend Sue is making little crocheted squares yeah. for a blanket. She's doing it for charity, for Alzheimer's. So, and she literally sat there all night knitting these crocheted <laughs> squares and they were amazing. They're so, so good. Um, but she loves it. Yeah, she absolutely loves it. So my sister was amazing at knitting. She would knit her jumper and she'd wear it at the weekend and then she'd unravel it all again on Monday and start no. all over again. Yeah, she was oh amazing. Oh my goodness, that's but I crazy. Never, I never worked out how to do that. I can knit something that's simple, but if I, I slip, no, miss a stitch, I've had it, you know, there's no way I can work it out. Wow. And I cannot, I just can't get... Um, how to do um, crochet I can't right. Leanne has promised she's going to teach me um, and I'm going to hold her to that <laughs> um, so I've stitched those little pieces here just in in place mm -hmm. there I, I'd do a few more stitches if I were you now what I want to do is I want to cut these loops down here and I'm going to give this a little bit of a plait so obviously you'd want to use black um, wool if you're going to be doing using the black hair but um you know it, it i've only got i only had white and actually it's better in order to show you um how it works because yeah, you we wouldn't see have been better. able to see it would um we? i mean even on the one with the dark brown hair you couldn't really see how that hairstyle is being done so i'm just doing a little bit of a plait down here now i would say if you're going to do this at home get someone else to hold the teddy or hold the rag doll for you um, so you've, you've got a bit of a resistance when you're doing those little plaits but we'll do the plait all the way down you could do one of these you could do two of these um, two bunches looks quite nice and we've just changed call her cruella we could and we've <laughs> changed her from what looked like a, a boy doll um, into a girl doll by just or boy um, george Boy George, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to just do a couple of little bits of thread or wool around the edge. You could make a little bow. Um, there's all sorts of things you could do with this. Um, really sort of make it your own. Maybe you want to make them look like your grandchildren or your children. Um, it would be a nice idea for Christmas. There you go. And then you've got that. It needs a bit of a trim down here. <laughs> it's a bit of a trim. Hair. Have a haircut. There you go. But then you've got your little doll with the hair and that's just one that. way of being able to secure that on here but as I say this way um, is done by stitch putting the the wool like I showed you over the top and then stitching down here but you have to do that before you put the head together um, and this one is done in exactly the same way um, but more intricate because actually what they've done is they've stitched down these two pieces here and then they've plaited um, a couple of strands and then folded it backwards to create that little hair um, design at the back but oh, really love lovely sort of set of um, different things you can do with these 
Absolutely beautiful. If you want to grab those, you can see there's two different templates as well. So you've got your set sewing template with your rag doll with two templates, uh, $8.99 or $11.65. That's for your outfit one. Uh, we've then got our outfit. Uh, oh, sorry, this is outfit one. So uh, we can see that with your two templates, uh, your sewing template, that's the girls one. So that's $8.99 or $11.65. And then you've got your outfit two, which has got your shorts and your trainers. And uh, that one is $8.99 or 11.65 and I would say that if you want to um, sort of mix and match have all those go for both of them and that way you've got all the outfits then uh, to dress your dolls accordingly uh, the, the girl dolls there remind me a bit of the little house on the prairie do you remember those yeah. years ago and those, those type of ones but I, I do didn't love realize dolls. they were an actual real family were they? I thought they were a fiction. They're not. So there, there's a photo oh, based on them, not yeah. the characters, well, not the perhaps actors. not. Perhaps not. <laughs> got exactly the same things as they did. But yeah, the, the, I think the person that wrote them was one of the daughters wrote ah. the stories. Ah. Um, I didn't realise it was a real, you know, a real, a real oh, family. It. it was a real tearjerker though. Oh. It used to sometimes have me in absolute tears, especially when one of the. the older sister went blind didn't she yeah she did so yeah it was uh, yeah quite quite awful but i used to love it yeah it was really really good uh, another thing that's really really good is the gemini 2 um it's an amazing machine if you've not seen the gemini 2 it's uh, an upgrade uh which is, well i say an upgrade we've just added some additional extras to our original machine we can't make the pressure any more than what it already is but this machine is just incredible with all those extra pieces that we've added to it uh, and if you ever wanted to see what we've upgraded it with, take a look at this video, which will show you just what we've done. Introducing the Gemini 2. Our brand new electronic die cutting and embossing machine has all the power and precision of the original Gemini, but with updated functions and innovative new features. Faster and quieter than ever before, the Gemini 2 does all the hard work for you. Cut out the most intricate designs in seconds and all at the touch of a button. Technology to apply higher pressure than many other machines offers perfectly crisp and clear results every time. The Gemini 2 has the power to take creative projects of all shapes and sizes in its stride. It will cut through a range of materials, from card and paper to cork, thin metal, leather and multiple layers of fabric. So you can save time on your paper craft, sewing and multimedia projects. A new and improved optical sensor runs the full length of its 9-inch platform offering edge-to-edge -edge precision with cutting plates of any size. Pause, rewind and resume functions take the guesswork out of crafting. Smooth gliding feet make light work of moving and manoeuvring your Gemini 2. And a turntable offers 360 degrees of crafting freedom. Neat storage compartments hold craft tools so they're always at your fingertips right when you need them. A built-in media stand and three USB charging points invite you to craft along with your favourite tutorials and workshops on your tablet or phone. Easy to use and with everything you need to get started right out of the box, the Gemini 2 is for beginners and experienced makers alike. From scrapbooking and home decor to handmade cards, quilting and everything in between, bring your creativity to life with the Gemini 2. Oh, welcome back. Yes, the Gemini is such an incredible machine there. Uh, if ever you want to treat yourself to a luxury Christmas present, uh, that would be the one for you. And remember, any orders over £10 or $10 a day, you are getting a free gift. It's our 12 days of Craftmas. Uh, it means that every time you spin the wheel, uh, we're giving you something else. Uh, so today is the free gift uh, and it's amazing. It's actually, uh, because it's sewing day, uh, we're actually popping in this uh, Make It Yourself key ring, which is a little bear. Uh, so you'll get that absolutely no pennies whatsoever uh, right we're going to head back to becky because we're going to have a look at some of the outfits as well um, in these rag dolls um, i love the fact that you can play dress up with these dolls because they're amazing and actually what you can also do becky is not only can you can create a present for a young one you can actually give them a set of outfits to go with it as well exactly. so they can make it their own yeah i mean maybe you want to give them a football shirt of their favorite um favorite team um, maybe you want to use some you know, some fabrics and the clothes that they've already got. Um, you can definitely do that. So this is um, the little um, shorts and the T-shirt, but easy enough to create trousers. Um, obviously, you just got to make them longer. But with these, you also get little socks, little tiny socks and Aww. little trainers <laughs> um, you can make with them. And they're, again, made very simply, um, you use some crimping shears around the edge of these. Um, then on the other side we've got 
um, little dress here. Um, so this um, a very pretty little dress and again easy to adapt so if you want to make it into a skirt you absolutely can you just use to you just need to use um, the, the skirt pattern or the, the bottom of the dress and um, you could do that and um, this is a different um, the dress looks slightly different on this one and um, this one's got a little bit of a, a waistband on it which is just something that we've added and um, this one has got more of a frill around the edge of the dress so something you can do with that and then this one is actually using um, what we termed the blouse pattern but made it into a shirt you know and again if you want to make it look more like a, perhaps a boy's shirt you could just do um, pointed lapels on their pointed collars and um, you could do something like that with little shorts on there um, but I thought I'd go have a go at doing one of the dresses um, for the dolls because um, they're quite you know they're not they're not overly complicated to do and what I like about the way we've done these these patterns if I take the if I take the dress off or slightly off um, you can see here we've actually lined it all as well and um, so all of this is lined and it's the same with the t-shirt as well um, and you can make the skirt as long or as short as you want to do it because all the skirt is is one long piece of fabric uh, that's just been gathered up and um, so it makes it really really simple right I'm going to grab this pattern uh, of out well, these um, outfits here so again, as we said before, the patterns are easy to use. We've got all of these step-by-step -step instructions or all these details here. We show you how many of everything to cut out. A um, pair of dungarees is something that you can make with this. And the dungarees look really nice with the um, little blouse. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to do the dress. So I need the dress bodice. And this marking here means um, place on the fold. So basically, you've got a fold piece of fabric over and you place the fold here. So it, may, it sort of creates, um, you're only cutting out one side, but you're actually getting a double piece of fabric. Um, then you've got your bodice back over here. You need four of those. Um, and that's all you need. And that big piece of fabric to create the um, actual skirt. Now, you can create a little bit of a frill um, to go around the edge if that's what you want to do around the edge of the arm holes. I'm not going to bother with that today. I'm just going to concentrate on this. So let me grab some. Um, there it is. I'm going to grab some fabric. I've got some blue fabric. Um, again, need to make sure my grain line is in the right place. So if I didn't know where my grain line was, I'm going to give it a pull here and a pull here, and I know my grain line is going that way. Oops. So again, I'm going to be efficient. We'll try and be efficient. <laughs> so I want to pop that fits nicely there. If I fold that there, and then again there, I've then got four pieces that I can cut out here. That will fit. That all fits nicely. So I use my heat erasable pen, mark through here. And then I, when I take the um, pattern off, or the template off I'm going to put some pins in here and then cut through all those layers we've got four layers of fabric here and I see you're just using our scissors Becky no I fancy am. sewing scissors um, Actually, these, I haven't got my sewing scissors. These are the ones here that everyone uses oh, for paper. Okay. So it just goes to show, mm -hmm. you know, I know Leanne says, oh, it doesn't matter if you use them for paper yeah. and for yeah. um, sewing. These are the ones that are literally at the side of us that we all use for paper all the time. Um, and they're cutting through this, no problem at all. Yeah, which is amazing. So we're going to cut around here. This just saves a little bit of time doing it this way. Okay, there we've got our four pieces, and then we want to fold over. Trim that off. See if this is round the right way. So if I've got enough here, I don't know if I do. Um, no, I'm not going to have enough there, so it's just a cut the piece off. I can use that for something else later. And Have you ever not checked your fabric and it been the wrong? Pardon? Have you ever not checked your fabric and it, you, it's not been the... No, because I think now, 
I've got so used. I know. I know. You know I the can feel the fabric. how it how it is. I mean, sometimes you get the odd little scrap. So that that no, I've got a salvage edge on that, so I know. But sometimes when you get the odd fabric fabric scrap and you don't know, you can feel. You can tell. You know, just by it almost makes a noise going that way. Mm -hmm. Can you hear that? Yep. Um, but you don't. It, it makes a different noise that way. All oh, right. Yes. And you can I mean, tell. I'm asking a pro, aren't I? I mean, <laughs> you can you can definitely tell which is the right way round. Um, let's have a look. Let's see if that's going to be okay. It's going to be sufficient. Let's fold that over, and I'm going to pop that on that fold. So that's my fold line. Mark here. So, so I've nice not got, easy. I don't think I've got enough blue fabric to do the skirt in the same blue, but I've got some yellow fabric, so it's going to be a brightly coloured dress. And then, so I've already done that one. I'm going to pop a couple of pins in here. So I'm going to cut that out in just a moment. But then I'm going to, while I've got the pattern here, I'm going to do the other one just below it. So I'm just going to pop on the fold like that. And then my marks through here. And then pin it like that. And then we're going to cut that out. And it's nice seeing you do this from scratch, literally from the template to drawing on the material to cutting it out. And it shows you it doesn't take very long when you've got the templates. No, it doesn't. And the fact that you can make and sell, you know, that yes. with the templates, again, is a real, it's a real boon, isn't it? Because you could make these. I mean, I just think from if you've got a very small bridesmaid or page boy, it's quite nice to give them a doll to carry yeah, rather than flowers. Idea. And, you know, then they've got, they've got a toy to play with afterwards and it could be in exactly the same outfits that they're wearing. Um, you can easily adapt these templates, um, it's not overly complicated. So we've, we've got all the pieces of the bodice. Now in the little booklet, like I said before, we always give you step-by-step -step instructions as, as to how to put everything together. Now when it comes to the dress, um, it does say, I think if I should look at the front here, um, with the skirt it says um, in addition to cutting the dress bodice, cut one strip of contrasting fabric, 39 inches by five and three quarters, um, and that's to create the skirt. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a, a little um, strip of fabric. Now I've only got my yellow fabric, and how many? This is really bright yellow fabric. It's like egg yolk or sympathetic cheese, um, 39 inches by five and a half inches. So let's have a look. 39 inches, I think it's some 30. 39, it's about there, like that, I'm just going to mark that, like that, and then I will cut that out. So I'm just going to clear my space, and I wanted it by five and three quarter inches. So I'm going to fold that fabric across like that. So I'm using basically a scrap of fabric that I happen to bring with me here. I want to trim that edge. So I'm going to use, where is my ruler? Brought a ruler with me. Where have you gone? There it is. Um, so this is our foldable ruler. This is what I'm going to use here. And I'm going to use um, my um, rotary cutter, which I haven't taken out the packaging, so I've grabbed a new one. Love this, fresh out the box. <laughs> Don't tell nice Tracy. Nice new one. So we've got... Oh, I believe that's on cartload tonight. Oh, is it? Ooh. So what I want to do is I want to put my fold line on one of the lines on my cutting mat and I just want to trim that edge off like that. So 
Susie's saying that she's lived in Florida or now New Orleans for almost 20 years uh, and she still has a hard time getting into Christmas because it's so warm. Yeah, can you imagine? I miss the cold snow around Christmas. One, two. I would find that really difficult mm, because it just definitely. doesn't feel what we're used to for Christmas or what everything is portrayed. I mean, like, like, you know, when you go to Australia, people always say, oh, you know, you've got to have Christmas on Bondi Beach. One, two, three, four, five, three quarters. Um, but I, could, I don't think I could do it. Well, Mary Pat can. She's saying uh, Christmas cruise to Mexico one year, another year, San Diego. A warm Ooh. Christmas is very nice. That sounds good. Mm. Right, so I've got my... This is going to form my little skirt. It's going to be quite a small, short skirt. So what I want to do for the skirt, the end... Um, let's just check I've got the right length. So 39 inches, so 32... Nine is there. Trim that little piece off. I just want to make sure um, that my end, the edge of my um, skirt, is nice and finished off. And so in order to do that, I want to fold over the edge um, and create a little seam at the bottom. So we're going to fo fold over like a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to do that with my um, iron. And I'm just going to stitch that we're just going to iron that close and then stitch along the edge. So quite simple, but this, take, this takes a little bit of time to do. But worth it when it's so neatly yeah, done. Yeah, totally. I'm so glad I wouldn't see what's the devastation underneath my desk. <laughs> and isn't it the same every time I'm here? Yes, it is. <laughs> OK, so just fold that over. One time someone did pan over to where all my stuff was oh, and I can't remember who that was but I was not happy it wasn't you I think I might have took a picture once of all the devastation you left in the studio with yeah. all your samples I do tidy it up I do tidy it up but it is the thing is I think because everything I have is quite big yeah. you know all the bits all the samples and everything there's a sort of trolley to the side of me that has um, you know, lots and lots of samples on it I suppose it's just the nature of um, the, no, big quilts and that sort of thing. Yes, yeah. And with kits like this, there's lots of little pieces, aren't there? There are, yeah. So I'm just going to fold that over and give it a quick iron again. So we're just, um, just pressing that sort of seam in, and that's going to form that, just that edge. Now, if you've got a little bit of a ribbon or lace, actually, that would look really nice um, under here. If you wanted to finish off that edge make it into a rawa skirt, skirt. You could do lots of different layers of um, ruffles if you wanted to do that, make like an 80s doll. Um, there's lots of things you could do with this, which I, I love. I love the fact that we've given you um, that ability to do something a little bit different. A couple of them more down here. Are you doubling that over? Yeah, so I've already folded over one side, but want to hide that little um, raw edge, really. Yeah. Now, you could get away, if you wanted to do, you've got an overlocker, you could overlock on the edges and then just stitch it um, across. With it would be nice to hidden all that, okay. that sort of rough edge um, if you had that. Or if you haven't got an overlocker, but you could do a zigzag edge on your sewing machine, and that would do the same thing. So we're just going to do that, and we're just going to stitch that together. And this is the bottom of the skirt, remember, not the top. I've still got that on the old stitch length. So two and a half um, millimetres is fine for this. You can use a decorative stitch if you've got a decorative stitch from your sewing machine to finish this off, which looks quite nice. I suppose it depends how much detail you want to put into something, yeah. isn't it?
just such a whiz on there. <laughs> Sorry, Machine, I would never be able to do that. <laughs> So there you've got your, your frill, your skirt. Now, in the, in the um, instructions, it says about doing a large stitch with your sewing machine along here and then pulling that together. I find, personally, the best thing for me to do and the easiest thing for me to do is hand sew it. And so very quickly to um, just do really sort of quite big um, stitches in and out um, and then pull it so you've got these little gathers so you can attach it to the bodice. That is my, that's my top tip. I think it's easier. But we've got these pieces here and these are what we're going to create with the bodice. So if I open up here, you can see here with the outer bodice pieces, and the outer bodice pieces are... Um, well, you've got outer bodice pieces, So we've got the li basically the lining and the... Um, outside of the fabric are the same. Um, so we've got these two pieces which create the front, um, which are the ones with the fold in. Um, so you've got this sort of double piece like that. So they create the um, actual front. And this bit is the lining. So you're going to have those two pieces like that. So that's what you're going to use for that. Then you've got um, your other pieces um, that form the back of your bodice and you've got four of those because you can imagine you've got the lining and the outer pieces back and front for those two pieces that join up right, to here yeah. so that's how you're going to they're going to look so we're going to put them all together um, now the way that we're going to do them is you're going to take these two pieces first of all which form the front and you want to stitch along the top part here here and here and so when you open them up it will look like that and then you're going to stitch these other pieces together and then they're all going to join like this. Now, in order to show you, here's one I've done earlier. <laughs> um, you can see this, how this, oh no. So you can see here, that's the front of my bodice here. And if this one's got a bit of a frill around the edge, so that's the front of the bodice. And then you can see you've got the back here so when we fold them over, that is the kind of top oh, yeah. that you get. That's how you create it. But it means that you, you've actually created, you've put together the lining and also the, um, the front it, using the same fabrics. You can use different fabrics if you want to, but you can see how that comes together. Now, the great thing about this is it hides all your workings, so you've not got any mess in here at all. Um, so when you get to this point here, um, if I move on to this bit now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch along here, and that's just the edges underneath the armholes. Um, so just a couple of little stitches there. And then, like I said, with that strip of fabric that I've created for the skirt, and I wanted to gather that all together, I've already done that with this fabric here. So you can see how I've pulled that gather? Yeah. And then the idea is... I probably have to... Actually, I'm going to have to do that again because it's come apart. The idea is we then attach it to the back of the body. So that piece would go attach around here and we stitch all the way along. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do um, with my, where is it, with my um, ordinary hand stitching, I'm just going to stitch um, a gathering line um, all along the top part of that bodice and then gather it and then I'm going to attach those two pieces along to the, um, to the top, the bodice and also the skirt. So I'm going to use that. And then you can see how it looks in its entirety um, there. So I'm going to do... I don't need that. And you'll still be thread. doing this by hand? I'm going to do this bit by hand, yeah. If I can thread the needle. Which is always a challenge. I mean, how many times have I... You, you've watched me... Threading a needle. There you go. I've done it. <laughs> done it. Now, I'm just going to gather just big stitches back and forth. I just literally just want this thread to hold while I gather and pull everything together. what you want to do is you want to make sure that the gathers are sufficient 
to um, to go around that bodice because obviously the fabric is much larger much thicker mm -hmm. or much longer than the, the bodice is so you want to make sure that you've got enough and you've got even spread of all those um, frills yeah Fourth few times. Go okay, right. So if I then make sure I keep hold of this piece and then I gather up around here like that. Make sure I'm happy with how that's all gathered. I've got a few few straggly threads here and there, but that's going to be fine making sure I've got that where I want it to be. Now I want to stitch down these two little sides first of all and do that now. All watching intently as this comes <laughs> together. No pressure backs. Mary is saying she never thought of using a basting stitch for that step. Yes, but um, that's what it says in the, the guide. Um, but I find it easier using um, doing by hand. Mm. Um, every time, I, I think I'm probably a little bit heavy handed. Every time I pull it through, it always seems to break. So I find it easier to work with that. Now we've got this, these two pieces and we want to attach them together. So what we want is this join to be where we've joined here, you know, at the back of the, the um, dress. So I'm going to pin it just together here. She might clip it just there, and I'm going to clip that side as well, like that. And then it will be a question of just manipulating that gathered skirt to that bodice. So you may find that you need to pull, you know, you need a few more gathers over here. Um, you just need to pull on that thread, which will allow those gathers, you can find the end of the thread. <laughs> um, it will just pull those gathers um, out a little bit more, or in a little bit more. We've got those. There. You just want to make sure that you're, you're moving them around so the gathers are even all the way around that little dress. So just joining the threads, joining the um, skirt bottom to the bodice. Like that. So you're happy with it all, with all those gathers. And then you're just going to stitch it. So once you've stitched it, that's how oh, the yeah, dress is going cute. to look. So we've got enough time to stitch it. Are we doing a demo of the show? That's all we need. Um... I don't think I finished any. It was just bits, wasn't it? I don't think I actually. I don't think I actually had a completely finished demo for this last show. I, yeah, I could put oh, the dragon's course, head in. Yes, because the uh, the, de the uh, dragon head. Uh, well, we'll then just put your um, stocking through to the end of the day. Then, yeah. Um, I think Becky, because that was a finished one. So that will go through for tomorrow's. Um, Demo of the week. Ooh. Do you think I'll win? I think you could. Win. Well, I haven't seen what's what I'm up against yet. Uh, there's box, lots of boxes by the looks of it. Boxes, Quite a lot of boxes. Shaker card. Mm, not really sure. But why is that not coming round? Happy about that bit. Yeah, Mary's saying she was taught both methods for uh, doing the gathering as well. And Rhonda is saying that that yellow fabric you use is like liquid sunshine. It is. 
We all need a little bit of that, don't we? We do. Or eggnog. I was. Well, I didn't know what eggnog was. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure because everyone's been talking about eggnog in um, coffee. There's been a coffee apparently that's got eggnog um, coffee. So, uh, and I didn't really know what it was. I thought it was like an advocar, like. Um, Is it not? Sort of. oh, that's what I assumed it was like. No, so apparently it's, it's made out of eggs, so it's made out of egg yolks and icing sugar, I think. Oh. Is it icing sugar? Could be wrong, it might be just sugar. So, uh, yeah, just sugar and, um, yeah, and then, is it whiskey, I think? Is it whiskey? It's got rum in it. Rum, rum in it? Rum. Okay. I don't know. Whichever. But it's right. made out of egg whites. There we go. So I, I need to trim the threads, oh, but you can see how cute. that comes together. And my, my gathers aren't very even. You need to spend a little bit more time doing that. But then that will make her... Um, let's have a look, see if I can get my doll. So if I popped that on the doll... That would be how it would look. Ah, very um, cute. Again, just take those threads away. But it, it's not, I mean, I'm not being able to show you, you know, step by step because it takes a little bit of time, but quite easy to do and great for being able to make them everything, sort of mix and match for your own children. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, absolutely love that and shows just how easy they are to put together. Um, I think if you're used to sewing and uh, you love those sort of kits, you're going to love making those clothes for the rag dolls, which are amazing. Um, absolutely love those ones. Uh, right, we're going to go back to our new launch from this morning, which are the ones here. Uh, these are fabulous. You're actually getting uh, three different designs in here. You're getting a sewing storage, a makeup case and a cylindrical zip. Um, let me see what that is. It's a sip per, uh, pouch. Perch? Pouch. Pouch. <laughs> um, I wasn't sure if it was a purse or a pouch, but it's a pouch. Uh, amazing designs. You're getting everything in there, including your material, which is really beautiful materials in those gorgeous red colours and those blues, which just work so well together. Uh, that entire three packs there, which are so giftable and also great stocking fillers. Um, it's your Make It Kit, three pieces. You're getting 19 elements in total in here uh, for £40 or $50. Platinum price, £32 or $40 so that's a great one to have on there uh, we've also got some uh, don't forget your free gift as well um, it's only for today only so if you go for your um, free gift today uh, you only got to spend over £10 or $10 and you will get that sent with uh, no extra cost um, and that we've popped in your basket it's a teddy bear key ring so we absolutely love that one uh, now going back to those animals do you fancy making those adorable little teddy bears uh, we've got two designs here this one is your floral bunny and then we've also got your gingham teddy as well so each one of those um, looks absolutely beautiful um, that's uh, let me get the animals as well that go in there the animals are your uh, let's pop them at the front here so you can see them uh, we've got the beautiful dragon there which uh, Becky did the head for for that and don't forget to tune in to Becky's Facebook live uh, is that next Wednesday or this Wednesday when this this is coming today? oh no next wednesday yeah. so this coming <laughs> wednesday saturday today i was thinking it was sunday then uh, we've also got the elephant in that collection as well and then the last one is that lion who's super super cute uh, becky's got some samples to show us for these ones i love these becky i think they just be, they're so much fun to make they are they're really gorgeous now we've already we had a go we've made the head um for the dragon um and then in the facebook lives i'll continue with this and we'll make that from scratch and actually i bought if I can find them again I found little recorders to put inside their tummies so when you give them a squish um, they will say something I haven't worked out what my dragon should say maybe I should ask for answers on a postcard Ooh, um, what yes. the dragon should say um, and then they are so gorgeous they are so squishable I love the little frill that you've got around here for the, the lion's mane I think it looks absolutely gorgeous yeah. and you know you can make make them with any sort of fabrics that you happen to have around the house and um, maybe you want to make some really lovely ones with liberty, liberty fabrics you can absolutely do that the world is your oyster absolutely yes you'll enjoy making them as much as becky has because they are amazing now don't forget to tune back in in an hour's time uh, because we've got an amazing cartload and it's all things sewing and you're going to want to see what's on that cartload because there is some amazing deals so we'll see you in an hour's time